Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how the NCLEX RN exam actually works and answering some of the most common questions. Let's get started with how the exam works. The NCLEX is a computer adaptive test, also known as a CAT. This means that the test modifies itself based on how well or how poorly you are doing. The more questions you get correctly, the harder the exam questions get. The more questions you get incorrectly, the easier the questions get. The exam is taken entirely on a computer and contains multiple choice, select all of the apply, fill in the blank, ordering and labeling questions. So with this knowledge, many people ask, how do you achieve a passing grade? The NCLEX uses what's called a 95% passing interval. This means that when the test is 95% confident you have either passed or failed, it will simply shut off. Let's take a look at an example. Here is an example of someone taking an NCLEX exam. Each point on the graph represents where the writer stands after the previous question. The blue line represents the passing grade. Every time this individual answered a question correctly, the points on the graph moved higher. Every time this individual answered a question incorrectly, the points on the graph moved lower. The minimum number of questions every writer takes is 75. At this point, you are evaluated to see if you are above the passing line or below the passing line. In addition, the computer also needs to be 95% confident that you will either stay above or below this line for the remainder of the test. After 75 questions, each and every question is evaluated the same way. Once you reach a question and the computer is 95% positive that you have either passed or failed, the, the test will simply turn off. Let's take a look at some of the most commonly asked questions. Lots of people ask how many questions can I write? And the answer is 265. After 265, the test will automatically shut off. What is the maximum amount of time someone can take to write the NCLEX? Well, the maximum amount of time that you have to write is six hours for the NCLEX RN and five hours for the NCLEX PN. This being said, it is very uncommon for somebody to take six hours to write the NCLEX RN. Typically, people are done between two and three hours, sometimes even less. So what happens if you do take the entire six hours and end up running out of time? Well, the computer will look at the last 60 questions you have answered. If any of those questions are below the passing line, regardless of confidence interval, you will fail. So what happens if you write all 265 questions? Well, if you write all 265 questions, the only thing that matters is where you stand on the last question. The computer will look at your answer, and if it is above the passing line, it's a pass. If it's below the passing line, you fail. Let's move on to discussing what content is on the NCLEX RN. The content on the NCLEX can be broken down into eight categories. 20% is management of care, 12% is safety and infection control, 9% is health promotion and maintenance, 9% is psychosocial integrity, another 9% is basic care and comfort, 15% is pharmacological and parenteral therapies, 12% is a reduction of risk, and 14% is physiological adaptation. If you would like a more in-depth breakdown of each and every category, visit ncsbn.org for more information. Let's move on to some questions about the results. In most states, it is possible to purchase a quick result service for $7.95. Canadians do not have such option at this time. With this option, you can receive your unofficial results within two business days after writing your exam. Without this option, the wait for results usually takes between a few days and several weeks depending on busyness. So what happens if you receive notice that you have failed the NCLEX? Thankfully, it's not the end of the world. Most states allow you to write an unlimited amount of times. The wait period between attempts must be at least 45 days. There are provinces in Canada that only allow a maximum of three attempts, however, these policies are slowly changing. Some states also have a limit to the amount of times you can attempt the NCLEX per year. Check with your board of nurses for further information. 
If you do fail the NCLEX, you will also receive an NCLEX Candidate Performance Report, also known as a CPR. A CPR will not tell you anything about how you did on each particular question or your overall percentage, but it will tell you if you are above the passing standard, near the passing standard, or below the passing standard in each of the categories explained in the previous section. So let's continue on with some more frequently asked questions. Is there a need to know list of drugs for the NCLEX? And the answer to that is no, there is not. However, applicants should focus on the major and most common drugs for each body system, as well as their most common side effects and precautions. Remember, the NCLEX RN is a safety exam. Can I use a calculator on the NCLEX? The answer to that is yes, calculators are provided on the computer and you are not allowed to bring your own calculator. Can I bring a pen and paper into the exam to take rough notes? The answer to that is no, an erasable whiteboard and dry erase marker will be provided to you upon arrival. Do I need to bring headphones for the audio questions? The answer is no, headphones are provided and you cannot bring your own pair of headphones. If I get a select all the apply question and I answer it partially correct, do I get part marks? No. The only way to get a SATA question correct is to answer all of the options correctly. There are no part marks on the NCLEX. Does the NCLEX use generic or trade names on questions with medication? The NCLEX uses mostly generic names. Rarely will you see a medication with a trade name as trade names vary based on area of practice. Is there any way you can cheat on the NCLEX? The answer to this question is simply a flat out no. It would be nearly impossible to cheat on the NCLEX as security pre precautions are extremely high. You are required to, to check in with a minimum of two forms of ID. Your picture will be taken and your palm print is registered into the computer. You are not allowed to bring any of your own supplies as everything you need will be provided to you. Prior to entering the exam room, you need to lock everything away in a private locker and participate in a brief body search that takes place in front of a camera and an instructor. Every time you enter or leave the room, you must scan your palm print. While in the exam room, you are watched by cameras from in front of you, above you, and behind you. In addition to writing the exam, you must sign a waiver indicating that you are aware of the fact that cheating on the NCLEX is not only unethical, but against the law and it opens, up, opens you up to potential prosecution. The next question I have is, what days can I write the NCLEX? And the answer to that is that each testing center has its own testing dates. You will, you will be able to see what dates are available and open to you when you are eligible to book your exam. However, most test centers operate Monday to Friday and some are even open on weekends. So that's going to be the end of this video explaining how the NCLEX works. If you have any further questions, please feel free to comment them below. The best advice I can give to anyone studying for the NCLEX is that the vast majority of people pass the NCLEX, so it certainly isn't an impossible thing to accomplish. I have a whole video dedicated to looking at stats behind the pass rates for the NCLEX, so if that's something you're interested in, please feel free to check out this channel. I also have some videos that help you study specifically for the NCLEX. The best tool I can recommend is definitely UWorld. I have a whole review posted on that as well. That's it for this video. Please subscribe for new videos every week and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up.